Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to cover the basics of handling forms and file uploads with FastAPI and Ginger 2. First, I need to install the required dependencies. We've got FastAPI and UviCore for running our app, Ginger 2 and AIO files for rendering our templates and we're adding Python multipart to handle sending multipart form data. I'm going to start by setting up the structure of the app. This just sets up our app to run with templating ready to go. So now we need to add our form. First, we'll add the template HTML to render in a file called basicform.html. As you can see, this is a super complex and realistic form that takes a username and a very secure plain text and visible password. The form is set to post to the current endpoint when you click the submit button at the bottom. It's important to note here that we've supplied the name attribute to our inputs. This is the name of the parameter we'll use on our endpoints to get the value later. The next step is to add an endpoint to return that form to the user. This is just a simple endpoint that will return our basic form when we hit the basic endpoint on our app. All it does is render the HTML from that template and return it. Nothing fancy. So now we have our form and can render it, we need to handle the form being posted back to us. As mentioned earlier, this will be a post endpoint on the same path as the get for the form. To start out, it's looking identical to the get, we're just returning the form again. You can do whatever makes sense for your website here. Pass some data to indicate success or failure, render a different page, redirect the user, whatever you want to do. Now we need to retrieve the form fields from the request so we can make use of them. And we can do this by using the form module or fast API. So we need to update our imports to bring that in. And then we can update the parameters on our post endpoint to pull the values in from the form. Here I've added two form parameters, the same way you would for body or query parameters, just for the form. The names of the parameters correspond to the names of the inputs we're given in the HTML form. Fast API will pull these values out of the form data from the request and make them available to use. We can add a quick print statement to show these working. Nice and secure. Now if we run the app, We can navigate to the basic endpoint we set up. And we can see our form is rendered. And if we enter some basic values and submit, we can see that we get back the exact same form because this is clearly a brilliant website. Back in the terminal, we can see the username and password have been logged out. That's a form handled in fast API, but having the parameters in line like that could get messy if you have a longer, more complex form. Another option is to set up a pedantic schema for the form to separate it out and tidy things up a bit if there are more fields. To show the difference, I'm going to add a second endpoint and form. Just keep things separate so you can see both and take your pick. I'm creating a second HTML template, this one called awesomeform.html. Our form is essentially going to be the same. And so is the get endpoint to render it. This is just being placed on a different path to differentiate the two. Then I'll add a post endpoint, which again will be the same right now. But now we need to make a change. I'm going to create a schemas file. And in here, I'm going to create a model for our awesome form. Here I've defined a basic pedantic schema and given it username and password fields. Unfortunately, that's not enough to get this working. Fortunately for me, there are much smarter people than me on the internet. And after some searching, I found an example on Stack Overflow that met my needs. I've left a link in the code and you can find the link in the video description as well. I can take no credit for this. I'm way too dumb. So what we need to do is to define a class method and have that retrieve the values from the form similar to before. 
And then if we go back to the endpoint, we can add an import to bring in depends and our new schema. Then we can add a parameter for the entire form data schema to our endpoint. This will cause our object to be populated using the request object by dependency injection and allows us to keep a larger, more complex form without making the endpoint parameters messy. I'll add another quick print statement. And if I run the app again, I can navigate to the new form on the awesome path, fill in the details and submit the form. And back in the terminal, we can see the form data object has been correctly populated. The last thing to add for this video is to add a file upload to our form so we can see how to do that. So first I'm going to update the basic form template to add a new field for a file upload. I've also had to add an encoding type to the form element. This ensures our form is sent as encoded form data, otherwise only the file name gets sent through to the API. We then need to update our endpoint to handle the received file. First, we need to add the imports for the required file types. And then we can add the file parameter to the endpoint. I've made the endpoint async so I can await reading the contents of the file which I printed out so we can see it working. If we submit the form again, back in the terminal we can see that the contents of the file have been received. Mine was simply a text file that had the word incompetent in it. Now let's do the same for our other implementation. We make the same change to the template. Then instead of making any changes to the endpoint, we need to instead update our schema. We've added the file the same way as the other fields were added, and because the endpoint already expects to receive an object match in this schema, no changes are required on the endpoint itself. So if we submit our awesome form again with a file, back in the terminal we can see that the file has been received. I haven't read the contents, so it just shows the object instead. So that's how to handle file uploads and a couple of ways to handle forms using FastAPI and Ginger2. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.